Today we're going to be talking about an innovative, fun, and effective way of doing tabletop incident response testing at your organization. Coming up. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, this is Simply Cyber, a channel dedicated to helping information security professionals take their career further, faster. Today we're talking about incident response tabletop testing. Now this is a skill that many organizations should be using and implementing, but oftentimes, at least in my experience, they're you know, boring, ineffective to address the ineffectiveness of tabletop testing and make it more engaging and fun. The folks over at Black Hills Information Security, John Strand's company, have developed a tool called Backdoors and Breaches that basically turns incident response tabletop testing into a game. Now stay tuned to the end of this video because I'm going to be giving away a deck of the cards to play it and a 20-sided die to use. Backdoors and Breaches takes tabletop testing and effectively turns it into a role-playing game akin to Dungeons and Dragons. So let's talk about the cards themselves. This card-based game has several different types of cards. First, there's procedure cards. These are several different types of cards that are skills and processes that an individual working in incident response would typically have at their ready. Now you do get boosters or multipliers if you have those processes documented at your organization. The next set of cards are more set up for defining what the scenario is, and this is what's run by the incident master. There are several types of cards. There's four that they'll be selecting. They'll be selecting from Initial access, these are typical ways that threat actors would establish access in your environment. There is pivot and escalate, you know, lateral movement or increasing the privileges on the account. There's persistence, a technique where bad guys are um, retaining the ability to get back into the system. And then there's C2 and exfiltration, you know, moving data out and being able to, for the threat actor to communicate and control uh, the malware itself. Also, there's a type of card called inject, which is, injects, as you would imagine, a certain type of randomness into the game. These cards are excellent, and one particular one that, well, these cards are excellent and very interesting. We'll get into it in a second. Now, the way that the game plays, the security operations team is issued four cards. They get to select them randomly from the uh, collection of procedure cards. The rest of the procedure cards are available and made out to uh, the security operations staff, but the four cards that they select uh, when they roll, they'll get a bonus multiplier for having that. The incident master can randomly draw one of each of the four cards in order to establish what the incident looks like, or if the incident master, if you're new to the game and you want to uh, make sure, or you want to test a certain scenario, can actually handpick the four types of, um, you know, incident type cards to establish what that incident is. The injects sit on the side. The incident master then begins to spin the tail of what the incident is. You know, uh, you come in Monday morning uh, after a long weekend, and the 20, you know the overnight uh, shift um, IT you know skeleton crew guy says, "Hey, you know, a user reported on Sunday that they got a pop up of some malware, but I just went to their computer and uh, in in you know reimaged their computer or cleared it or." Um, I, I clicked through it. It wasn't anything to worry about, just to let you know. So what do you do? Now it, it goes to the security operations team. They have all these procedures they can execute. They select one, and then they'll roll a 20-sided die, which is also provided by Black Hills. And if they get less than 10, then that process fails, and the incident continues to develop. If they do get more than 20, then that procedure worked correctly, and the incident master would turn over one of the four cards. The goal is to turn over all four cards uh, to consider getting a win, but really the, the win condition is going through the incident itself. Now I'll also point out one huge benefit that it, you immediately recognize with this game is twofold. One, typically when you say you go to a machine and you identify that there is a, a new user account created that doesn't make any sense. So you know, maybe the SecOps team says at that point, okay, so we figured it out. Uh, looks like malware created an account. Uh, we just re-imaged the machine or we deleted the account and ran malware bytes on it or something like that. Good to go. No, you really have to think. There's three other cards that you got to uncover. The idea is you have to continue 
assessing the situation to understand was there lateral movement, were other hosts infected, was data exfiltrated. So you're not just solving the problem and moving on to the next incident, which could happen in a lot of organizations. You're really thinking through the entire incident. So A, your SecOps team is getting perspective of a complete incident response strategy. The second thing I wanna point out, and this is awesome, those inject cards, if you roll a 20 or higher, which can happen with those uh, multipliers, then you get to uh, select in, or you choose an inject card and inject it into the game. Now there's a bunch of different inject cards. Some are beneficial to the SecOps team, some are detrimental to the SecOps team. But one that I wanna point out that I just find fascinating and really, really useful to an organization to identify gaps is one where basically it says something akin to um, lawyers want to talk to your senior security operations person to get briefed on the situation and effectively that player leaves the game. So if you have an organization where you have like one rock star senior SecOps person who handles everything and a couple junior folks who are kind of learning from that individual but not really able to execute, when you remove that individual and you start asking the junior people what to do even though they have the procedures in front of them, they are having to think through what would they do and quickly understanding that there are some areas of improvement or processes that probably should be documented that would provide immediate value to that incident response capability. Because let's be honest, the senior person getting pulled in by legal, completely possible. The senior person being on vacation, completely possible. We all know threat actors don't attack uh, between nine and five Monday through Friday on non-holidays, right? So there is really a lot of utility. I have stepped through a couple of these um, simulations, if you want to call it that, and I find it really interesting. I will point out that the incident master really has to think through what the incident looks like in order to have it flow well, uh, but it's very useful. Now, once you've worked through this a few times with your security operations team, you can really take it to that annual tabletop exercise where you have senior leadership, legal, PR, compliance, you know, risk if you have that office in your organization. These individuals can get involved because one of the injects is, oh, all your data has been posted to Pastebin. Okay, so now your data is out there. Is this a, a, you know, say you work in healthcare, is it a HIPAA breach? Say it's uh, intellectual property, say it's your client's information. What is the impact and what is the response? You can't just say, I'll send an email and we'll, we'll talk about it at the three o'clock meeting. No, like this is real and it's happening now at least in the simulated environment. So it really gets those individuals thinking, instead of having some kind of, um, I don't wanna call it harebrained, but really generalized, um, simple scenario where, you know, basically everybody says, oh, we just re-image the machine, or oh, we would just issue a public statement or whatever. Like, it really gets you thinking. So huge, huge value. Okay, so now, now that I've already got you sold on this, okay. So you can get a copy of Backdoors and Breaches on Amazon or at a conference that Black Hills is at. They are literally, they're selling them for 10 bucks a piece, which is equivalent to what it costs to make it. So they're not trying to make money on this. They're trying to get it out there. They're giving them away as much as they can. They sent me uh, a box of them, which I'm really, really appreciative. Thank you. So in keeping with that, I'm going to be giving away uh, a copy of Backdoors and Breaches to one of the viewers. Uh, I'll be doing this throughout many of my videos, but I wanted to start on the video where I'm highlighting it, obviously. So in order to win a copy of Backdoors and Breaches in a sweet 20-sided die with the Black Hills Information Security logo on it, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. A week from when I post this video, because I'm not entirely sure, but I'll be very obvious on the uh, post itself. A week from when I post this video is when I'll read through all of the comments uh, map it up to subscribers to make sure and I'll have a list of all of those individuals and then I'll randomly select one and, and then notify them and mail them uh, their copy of Backdoors and Breaches. So good luck to whoever does that. Well, that's it for this time. Thanks and until next time, stay secure.